One of the most beneficial things you can do in your Milky Way images to reduce noise is to utilize a process called stacking. In effect, this is where you take a series of shorter exposures and stack them together in post-processing to reduce the overall random noise that shows up in the image. In this case, we're gonna utilize a piece of software called Starry Landscape Stacker, which I've linked in the description below. One of the difficulties you can run into with software like this is when you have a lake in your image that has a perfectly still, clear reflection that you wanna be able to show, it's not going to know what's the sky and what's the reflection and where that apparent movement is in the sky when calculating the stars and how to stack those images and account for the rotation of the Earth. So what you'll wanna do is go through the entire process twice, once for the sky, once for the lake. And that's what we're going to take a look at in this video. Now you'll see here, I already have my 13 images pulled aside and selected. There were a few that we shot that had, you know, a random red light from somebody's headlamp that came through in the image or a little bit of a blur or something came through the sky that I didn't want. We've already removed those from the sequence and are just left with these 13 here. Now, if you look at the inspector in the develop tab, You'll see these were all shot at ISO 6400 at a 17 millimeter focal length, f 2.8 and 15 seconds. Now that's a relatively short exposure time, but being that we're in very, very dark skies, you'll see that I've got quite a bit of detail already showing in the Milky Way. And that short 15 second exposure time is going to virtually eliminate any apparent movement in the stars in the sky. So that's why we went with those settings. And you can see what I was, what I was describing where we've got very clear stars, both in the lake reflection below and in the sky. That's what's going to give us the trouble in the software. But before we bring these into Starry Landscape Stacker, we wanna make a couple of very small minor edits just to get these standardized and prepped for the software. So what I like to do first, just to make it easier when I've got a larger library of images that I'm working with, is select everything in your Select all of your thumbnails that you wanna be working with. I'm gonna right click those and I'm gonna set a color label. And this is up to, up to you which color you wanna choose, but I just like to choose green. So with all of the thumbnails selected down below, all I'm really going to do is a couple of very minor adjustments in this basic adjustments tab. I'm gonna start by bringing up the exposure just a little bit, as well as the shadows to start to recover a little bit of that shadow detail. Now I don't wanna to go too far in this and start bringing out tons and tons of noise like you see there if I bring it all the way up, but I do wanna get a little bit more detail than I have when it's at zero. So I'm gonna find a nice balance in between and call that good right there. Now I really don't wanna do any other edits to this until I've stacked them and have a noise-free image to work with, but I do wanna check on a couple of things. Most importantly, in the detail section of Lightroom here, I wanna make sure that I've got all sharpening entirely turned off, luminance noise reduction turned off, and color noise reduction, if we wanna leave that a little turned on at default around 25 or so, that's perfectly fine. The other thing to check is the lens correction. I don't yet want to introduce any lens corrections here and run the risk of confusing the stacking software. So I'm gonna turn off both the chromatic aberration reduction and the lens profile correction. From there, I don't need to do any other settings or adjustments on this. I just need to output all of these files with the same settings as TIFF files for the software. So to do so, I'm gonna first, with all selected still, I'm going to hit the sync button on this to sync the changes that we just made across all of these images. And being that we only adjusted a few, you could select just that basic section along with the lens corrections and the noise reduction. But I'd like to just check all of them. I haven't done any cropping. I haven't done any other transformations. So it's perfectly safe to just check all and hit synchronize without running the risk of cropping one image differently than the other, for example. So with all of those synced, all I need to do now is right click any one of the thumbnails, go to my export options and choose export. From here, we're gonna look at a couple of different things. First, to specify which folder I want this to go to. I typically like to make a folder somewhere on my desktop or a working folder, whatever you're comfortable with, and just call it TIFFs so that I know that these are the working files that I want to work with inside of the stacking software. So I'll make that folder, I'll choose it, and I'll go down to the rest of these settings. 
I don't need to do any file renaming. Since this isn't video, this section won't matter. The file settings is an important one. Here I want to make sure that I choose TIFF is the image format. I set my compression to none. Color space. You can choose Adobe RGB or Profoto RGB. Both work great. I prefer the Adobe RGB just given the color space that it opens up. And the important one here is the bit depth. I want to make sure we keep that at 16 bits. Resizing, we do not want to do. We do not want to apply any sharpening. Default metadata is fine, and just make sure we turn off any watermarking or post-processing. From there, we'll hit export and wait for our progress bar on the top left to show us when those are complete. Now that we've got all of our TIFF files exported, it's time to open up Starry Landscape Stacker and bring those into the software. When you first open up Starry Landscape Stacker, you'll be presented with a window asking you to choose the files that you want to work with. I'm going to navigate to the TIFFs folder that I've just created, click on the first image, and holding shift, click on the file image at the bottom to select all. And then hit open. Now, depending on whether or not you had the option checked to show the image classification table upon open, you may or may not be presented with this screen here. If you are, it should, by default, have all of these images selected as light frames, meaning these are the image frames that, of your regular exposures. So just double check that they're all set there. And when you're, if they are, go ahead and hit continue. Now, once it finishes processing all the frames, you'll, presented, you'll be presented with something similar to this. What this is showing you here is all of these little red dots throughout the images are supposed to indicate the stars that the software sees when it pulls these in. Now, you'll see, obviously, there's a ton of them up in the sky area here on top, but we've also got a few selected down below. Now, what I want to do is make sure to erase everything that's down in this reflection for the first run of this, and when we do it the second time, we'll do the opposite. So to do so, I'll flip over my selection tool here to the erase red dots option. I'll make my eraser size quite a bit bigger just to make this a little faster. And down in the bottom, just click and paint over any of these red dots that are showing to eliminate them. Now, once I'm happy with that, I can go ahead and hit this button over here that says find sky. And it's gonna compute and find the general mask of what it thinks the sky region is. Typically, it does a pretty good job of this but you'll see there's a couple areas in the top left, top right, where it obviously didn't quite create the mask completely, as well as a few small areas right by these, the tree line here. So to fix that, we just wanna make sure I've got the paint option set to sky over here. For the top areas, I'll increase my brush size so I can quickly just paint over those to make sure everything is filled in. Then if I zoom in on the tree line here by hitting Command Plus on a Mac, I'm not going to go through and make these all absolutely perfectly tightened up to the trees, but as a general rule, the closer and tighter you can get, the better. I'm just going to worry about eliminating some of these big areas here. Now, an important note, if say I accidentally go over a tree or something in the foreground area here, I can undo for one, but if I happen to do that and notice it later, it's very important that I come back and flip this back over to my ground and paint those back in. You're significantly better off to have more of the ground, the foreground showing and the sky not perfectly masked than vice versa and have some of the foreground painted over telling the software that it is part of the sky. So I'm just gonna go through, double check all of the horizon line here and make sure everything is to my liking. There's no major holes that I wanna brush up. Okay, and that looks pretty good. So when I zoom out on this image, I can double check that I've got all corners of the sky painted in. My horizon line looks pretty good. Next, I'll just go ahead over here onto the left and hit the Align and Composite option. This is going to process all of the image, images, figure out where the stars are, align those to one another, and essentially stack them while ignoring the foreground and the movement of the sky, resulting in a nice, clean, single image that we can then save out and bring back into Lightroom for further editing. So now that it's completed processing these images, we've got the, the result of the single stacked image that you'll see has significantly reduced noise in the both in the sky and the foreground areas. And to prove that point, I can switch over here to where it's 
letting me choose the current image that's shown. And instead of showing the composite, I'm just going to pick any one of these original TIFF files for a comparison. You see when I switch that, all of this noise gets reintroduced in the foreground, in the sky. But comparing that back to the composite image, you'll see a notable difference between the two. That's what we're after here. So with that in place, I just want to double check this com composition algorithm and choose the mean minimum horizon noise. This is just going to average out the best of the best without duplicating stars and giving me the lowest amount of noise based on that mean average. And finally, I just need to save this current image and I can uncheck the option that says save a copy with the image mask since I won't be using that on this piece. And here, I'm going to make a new folder inside of my TIFF folder and call it Composites. And in the file name, being that we're going to do this twice, once for the sky and once for the reflection, I like to add a label to it and just put sky in front of the name here so I know which piece I'm working with. So I'll go ahead and hit save and let it finish. Now, all we need to do is repeat that same process, but instead of masking out for the sky, we'll mask out for the lake, treating it as the sky. If you look at the image here, you'll start to see that it's got a lot of blur and double image, repeated stars. That's the result of a single stack that we want to eliminate. So to do so, let's just go back to the file, open. We'll choose the exact same TIFF files that we worked with originally. We'll click on the first one, holding shift, click on the last to select all, and go ahead and hit open. And again, if we're presented with the classification table upon open, just double check that everything is marked properly as your light frames, which it is, and then go ahead and hit continue. Now you'll see here, we're presented with the same thing. We've got lots of red dots marking the stars in the sky and a few red dots marking the stars in the reflection. We're gonna do the exact same process, but this time erasing the dots in the sky, and we're gonna add a few more to the very obvious stars in the reflection, just to give it the software a little extra help in determining the mask. So first I'm going to click on the erase dots and just get rid of everything that's up in the sky. Then I'll come back and click the add red dots, zoom in on the lake area, the reflection area using command plus, and on any of these areas that has a really obvious single star, I'm just gonna click once to add that point. This will just give it a few extra points for it to calculate where the mask should go. Okay, and then just as before, when we're finished with that, we can hit the find sky button and it'll let it compute for the mask. Now I fully expected to do a pretty poor job of this since it's really not designed to calculate a reflection, but it, we can just go in and paint this in just as we did with the sky before. Now, one caveat here. If I look closely at the where the reflection of the trees meets here, there's really not all that many stars that show up right in that area, so I don't need to be terribly precise with this. But of course, the more precise, the better the result. So go ahead and in this case, switch it back over to painting in your sky to just quickly paint in the main area. And then I like to come back and finesse the horizon line just a little bit further. Now, as I said, the more accurate you can be, the better the result you're going to get. But this absolutely doesn't need to be perfect. If you see here, I'm just gonna casually paint around these as close as I can get. But again, being very careful not to overlap the foreground of the tree reflection in this case, like I just did here. So when I do that, I'll grab my ground brush and just kind of erase that section out. I'll go through and finish this up and then we'll come back to the process. Now that I've got the lake painted in and masked out for the sky, it's the exact same process we just did. I'm gonna come back over here, hit the align and composite button, let it process for those images. This time, letting the software think that we wanna keep the reflection in the lake from rotating instead of the actual sky. Okay, and now that that's complete, you can see we've got the exact opposite effect. This time we've got the blurring and the apparent movement in the sky above, but the reflection in our lake looks nice and crisp and the noise has been reduced throughout. So once again, just gonna double check that I've got the mean minimum horizon noise selected, and I'm gonna save out the current image. 
go into my composites folder that we created earlier. I will add the tag to of I will add the tag of reflection to the file name and go ahead and hit save. And from here, we can close out of Starry Landscape Stacker. We're done with that software and we'll just come back into Lightroom and import the two new images that we just created, the stacked images. I like to just click and drag these by going into the finder, grab the two, click those and drag them in. Okay, here I've got the two composite images, the stacked images prepped in, 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 uh, in Lightroom. The first of which shows up as the lake reflection. Second, it's gonna be my sky. So what I want to accomplish with these two images now is I wanna bring them both into Photoshop, align them on top of one another, and essentially mask out the sky and or lake from one or the other to get a nice composite image that shows a clearly stacked sky, lake reflection below with the tree line in between. So to do so, I'm gonna shift click on both of these thumbnails to select both. I'm gonna right click that, choose edit in, and I'm gonna open them as layers in Photoshop. Now, because I chose open as layers in Photoshop, it's going to automatically take both of those images, open them separately and combine them into a single Photoshop document with both layers showing individually down below. Now you'll see here, it automatically pulls in the file names I gave it with reflection and sky. So it's easier for me to understand which piece that I'm working with. And like I said, all I really want to do is if I've got my reflection layer as the top layer, that's gonna give me my lake down below. And on that, I need to mask out the sky, revealing our stacked sky layer underneath it. To do so, I wanna select the top layer and add a ma layer mask by clicking the mask button down below. Then I wanna make sure I've got a nice soft brush selected. I'm gonna go in and adjust the hardness down to zero. And I'll adjust the size of the brush to match whatever the general resolution of the camera I shot with was. So in this case, it was the Canon R5. So I'm gonna set this to you know, roughly a thousand pixels or so and call that good. Then I just wanna make sure I've got the color set so that the black is on my top layer since black is going to hide the sky. So I'm gonna just paint in across over the tree line here and work through the rest of the image to reveal the nice clear stacked stars below. Now, one last thing that I typically like to check on this is to make sure that I didn't leave any gray areas in the mask that I've just created. So I flip over to my channels tab. I'm gonna turn on the mask layer and turn off the RGB channels, which is gonna show that mask as black. Now you can see here, I obviously have some areas that weren't properly masked out. So I'm just gonna go through and repaint that back in until I have everything in nice, even black in the areas that I intended to mask out. And when I'm done, I can go back to the channels tab. I will turn that mask layer back off, the RGB on, and we're back to the completed image that we just created. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit save on this. And being that I imported these from Lightroom, it's gonna automatically save this image, pop that back into Lightroom as a new, a new file that I can work with there to finish all my edits. And you'll see it's automatically selected here. If I flip through, we can just confirm that I've got the nice clear stars, clear foreground. And again, I like to set a color label on these so that I know what I'm working with and that this is kind of my finished image to work with. So that's it. We can go through and do some further editing on this nice clear stacked image. I won't get into that in this video. We'll save that for another one. Uh, to, we'll save that for another one to go through a lot of the basic Milky Way editing techniques that I like to employ on this. But here you have it. Here's your fully stacked image with the sky and the reflection all perfectly clear and ready for edits. Now, if you have any further questions or want any follow up on any of the things you've seen in this process, go ahead and leave that in the comments below and I will get back to you. If you liked this video, found it helpful, please hit the like button, subscribe if you want more and stay tuned for even more Milky Way editing and shooting videos. Bye.